Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. I think a very, very complex topic. We're going to have very easy slides, a very simple understanding of how body weight is regulated. How do we take this patient's journey through the complexity and chronicity of obesity? Some understanding of the molecules of obesity, which, of course, my co-speaker, Dr. Sanjay Garwal, sir, is going to talk about. So let us look at what is normal. Generally, what we hear from a lot of uh, scientific bodies, from a lot of scientists, actually, these were all, or these are all done by the physiologists of their respective countries. So what is that normal thing that we are trying to harp upon today is that a simple equation which may not be fit, which may not be true for all the patients at all the times, but importantly, an intake should be equal to kind of expenditure and what is that difference those pointers that we're going to talk is hunger satiety and nutrient absorption can anybody tell me what is the meaning of satiety satiety yeah it's a very common word when you talk about obesity food dr banshi has really uh, kept very good lunch i was told satiety is the feeling of fullness in between two meals so from your breakfast till your lunch how much full you are that is satiety or between your lunch till your dinner is satiety then what is satiation satiation is the feeling of satisfaction of food within the same meal the moment you take your lunch plates and you're about to feel full your uh, tummy you feel that no i've eaten sufficient that is satiation so these two things are very important Satiation will give the signal that, yes, stop the meal. Now I don't want to eat anything more. But satiety is the one which decides what next you are going to take. It may be a new word for many, but this is what we need to understand. And apart from these three, how do you do the expenditure of energy? Is by knowing about exercise, by knowing about what is the thermogenesis of that particular patient. Some slides will show you about metabolic rate and about the need. This is NEAT need. This is the medical need, which you have to understand, even make the patients understand. Anybody, what is the full form of need? NEAT? Non exercise activity thermogenesis. This gentleman who came in the yellow shirt and the lady who came in the green dress, they are moving, right? They did something with their bags, they did something with their uh, paper, whatever she's trying to do. That's N. Non exercise activity thermogenesis. The gentleman who just sat there in the black shirt. That activity is that. What all we are doing, me and Dr. Sanjay Garwal and my chairpersons right now, we are completely static. There is completely no thermogenesis except for the basal one. So the gentleman taking a photo is an activity. So in a lecture of obesity, we would expect people to actually do some kind of activity. Maybe some people can stand at the end of five minutes and sit down again. That will be counted as a non exercise activity thermogenesis it is very important to teach our patients that they should what they should increase from their routine let's look at this particular slide the energy intake body weight and expenditure so that is what we've just explained about maintaining the balance most of the times our patients say doctor but i do not eat more please do not discourage these patients this may be true because obesity doesn't happen to people only those who eat more i repeat this sentence Scientifically, obesity can happen to people, those who are eating actually very less. I'll show you all these slides, how it is possible. There's a data on that. Energy balance, if you're looking at this particular patient, that the patient is eating food, there is something called as a resting energy expenditure. Dr. Sanjay Garwal is my next speaker. He's not going to move at all because he's trying to see his last, last slides through his phone, right? So for example, if he moves nothing, he does nothing for the next 15 minutes, that's his resting energy expenditure. Some people, those who have sat already before I started, they also are in a state of a resting energy rate or their resting metabolic rate. That is what is your activity. Now, the physiological stress, some people have feel, are feeling cold, people are trying to set their jackets as this lady who did over here. Some people are looking at where is the warm tea that I can have before entering this particular session. Some people were talking about metformin, some people may 
we have some people may have had tea with that cookie which is kept outside so that heat production in response to current food or the energy that is produced or required during this particular process is your diet induced thermogenesis how many of you had tea and cookie before entering this hall maybe one hour before two hours before okay i saw a lot of you yeah you can don't, don't try please yeah very good thank you at least 70% of us have had you people at the moment are in a diet induced thermogenesis the slides are very boring i'm trying to make as interesting as possible now this activity this man is trying to move from one place to another the guy in the blue shirt i don't know why he moved that exactly is what is your spontaneous physical activity which included change in his muscle tone because he changed his posture change in balance the second guy is trying to do that and fidgeting with their uh, devices the cameraman did that and even unconscious movements again somebody is trying to put the hair properly and itch over here please this is not jukega nahi right so these are all your non exercise activity thermogenesis let's further bore you all with this particular thing exercise induced thermogenesis how many of you ever walk in your life in the morning before breakfast oh that's a very good number i'm very happy with gujarat how many of you walk ever in your life whether morning evening night any time all walkers all walkers okay oh i am in love with gujarat okay so that's a nice thing please continue your exercise these are the four ways these are the only four ways physiologically that energy can happen with a physical activity and why does it happen it is because of a very nice balance between orexin and anorexin what is the meaning of orexis anybody orexis means hunger orexis means bhook lagi hai that is in greek and orexin is the hormone which is also related with hunger yes we know that ghrelin there are many many other hormones which are there but we that's why anorexia nervosa people are very thin because there is no appetite somebody did talk i think doctor uh, asked about a question that with anti tubercular therapy if their appetite is gone down so he was talking about anorexia in tuberculosis right so this is a list and that is a list of anorexogenic hormones as well as orexigenic peptides and hormones which are central as well as peripheral you do not need to remember these what you need to understand is this that when there is an action in hypothalamus or arcuate nucleus which are the first order neurons your satiety peptides of pp pyy glp1 and oxantomodulin they come into play with the hunger signal now the moment i talk about that there is a very good lunch which is kept outside the hormones start what will be the in, in the lunch this is a conference after 3 years maybe for some this is a conference which is after 3 months for some but it's a high at regency so food expected is to be really of good dopaminergic related satiety signal a lot of you like moong dal halwa right is there somebody who doesn't like moong dal halwa it's related to this like very excellent can you tell me what do you like if not moong dal halwa any one thing that just tell anybody yeah. gulab jamun so moong dal halwa by and large is a dopamine secreting food instant muh mein rakhte aisa lagta hai pata nahi kya ho ganga na hai right that's the feeling that you really feel good maybe that gulab jamun is for maybe for you it may could be ice cream maybe for you could be a shahi tukda so these food should be really taken in lesser quantity when you are about to eat that because these are the ones which are going to put you weight put weight on you and they may actually further increase appetite after eating one gulab jamun do you eat one more or no where are you who was that yes see the yes so look at that yes okay so that's how the regions of the brain the brain stem and the signal satiety amylin and glp1 again from the intestine that yes we've received our quota for the time for time being for the day and that's how the whole feeding the whole gastric emptying and the metabolic rate is decided now i will show you three important things prakritik eating vikrutik eating and vastavik eating okay this has got absolute a scientific thing it is there on slide nothing is from ultima shakes house this is called eating for hunger this is what this is prakritik this is absolutely natural right lunch time even though ultima shake says whatever i am going to eat because that is how my body is designed for including our chair persons and my co speaker eating for hunger eating when you need is a natural phenomenon that's the homeostatic eating 
but i have attended a very good lecture in which i learned weight loss and i'm going to i'm very happy about it so let me eat something i have got up at 4:30 in the morning i took my flight but i was there at the airport the flight was late so i will eat something really good today and something really extra because i need to have energy because there are a lot of good functions by evening and that's how we would take it as a pleasurable eating or because we are in a different place away from f uh, f house we would eat food in a pleasure oh we are, we are meeting banchi bhai i'm going to eat something really nice today maybe that would be something for that pleasure eating what is the third one then anybody there are three types of eating right i told you in the start if you're not eating for this this is normal if you're not eating for this which is again normal there's something which is causing the other kind of food i already told you what's dopamine controlling want and that is deciding to eat today whatever althama shekh has said and sanjay garwal has said i am going to eat it's my gala dinner time right that's how you decide it's a compulsive eating it could be an abnormal eating it could be decide to eat you're sitting in a plane you've had very nice dinner you're going to your home place but the lady has served you food in the aeroplane you decided i will eat face to jayega but your tummy is not a dustbin my dear right so decide to eat at the right moment so your feelings of being in diaker con have really signaled your thoughts that your appetite is gone up and your behavior is whether you decide to eat or you don't decide to eat so that thought feeling and behavior is an absolute ongoing triangle is a it's a circle that goes on in continuity and that's what is the chronicity and complexity of obesity now apart from the physiological part of this chronicity and complexity what are the causes or etiopathogenesis of obesity once again similar wordings in the slide what does the mind think where does this food processes go from adipose tissue comes into play the pancreas come into play alpha beta delta gamma all cells gut a lot of hormones your genetics comes into play and certain medications if you are on a medication like doctor asked a question akt and metformin he will have further lowering of appetite yes that's very much possible added with palatability or pleasure somebody on the flight was constantly saying if you are coming to ahmedabad you have to go to what is that place manek chowk and eat i don't know what is available in manek chowk in gujarat so that was the talk of the town everybody like chala chala aata ave manek chowk javanu che so that's how i learned one more line in gujarati environment inactive lifestyle smoking cessation psychological factors and genetics and your epigenetic the high heritability i'll be done very quickly high heritability of body weight genes in hypothalamus leptin other pathways and all these predisposed to weight these are 300 plus snps do not get uh, disheartened i'll tell you very simply in one line you need to take care of yourself that is what this slide says there are so many lokhai there are so many genes distribution fat distribution more than 100 genes even here the inherent factors for predisposing are socio cultural if i am watching this lecture online i will eat maybe something healthy in the room but i finally decide to order something else from the hotel menu but however if i am in my clinic and i am ordering something else my food content calorie protein will be different traditional beliefs and peer pressure socio economic factors food environment very important what the person next to you is eating also influences a lot of time with our plate and availability of inexpensive highly palatable food which is there there was one person in the flight who said i will buy that 15 kg farfra from ahmedabad there is one street where crores of farfras are sold in the evening is that true the yeah the, the, yeah so this is what is a highly palatable food so associated with multiple comorbidities and the ones in the dark are really to be taken into uh, consideration because these are very well documented and of course they are divided as metabolic m1 mechanical as m2 mental as m3 and monetary factors as m4 m4 is not on the slide so what are the benefits of weight loss and concept of weight gain in the last 2 minutes we'll take it from there benefits of weight loss are many for example if somebody is of a 100 kg weight as on today 5 to 10% means 
a 5 to 10 kg weight loss for that particular person, a medical weight loss, a slow weight loss, a gradual weight loss, and a maintained weight loss. These are the terms which are very important to talk to the patient and the relative because we have to give a realistic expectation. You cannot say, I want to reduce 20 kg in one week and let two Katrina Kefs come out of me suddenly. No, that is an unrealistic weight loss goal. So the goal has to be absolutely correct at the start. Reduction of type 2 diabetes absolutely with a 10 kg or a 10% weight loss. The risk reduces, remember, remission is a totally different ball game over here. Reduction in mortality, yes, benefits are there. Improvement in lipids, blood pressure, OSA, apneas, and improvement in quality of life. This is what would improve with just your 15, 5 to 15% by reducing weight. So a lot of benefits are there, including your cholesterol, your osteoarthritis, stress continence, and a skin problem. The challenge is to maintain the lost weight, and that is the reason we need to have talking to the patient about the realistic goals and maintaining their nutrition for a long time because there are diet-induced changes then after the patient has when he or she has lost around 10 to 20 kgs depending on the goal that you've adapted and why does the patient regain the weight now that those who attended the first two slides of the talk these are the ones with the changes in hormones of satisfaction of hunger and changes in or increase in hunger hormones with the lost body weight supposing this patient has now 90 kg this is what would happen satisfaction goes down but hunger increases which is again compensated by decreasing in the total energy expenditure and the brain thinks that my body has got a disease because my fat mass has gone some amount of protein has gone i need to come back to my original weight so you need to work out now with the newer metabolic rate with the newer metabolic parameter anybody what are the symptoms of obesity we learned satiety we learned satiation we learned orexin symptoms of obesity are hunger increase in hunger and weight gain yeah so very normally uh, very usually in the clinic patients don't say doctor mera weight gain hua some people are really funny they say doctor mujhe kapde pehnne mein difficulty ho rahi hai can you believe this was a chief complaint of a patient who came to me with blood pressure and diabetes the first time i said why did you do your blood test kyunki kapde pehnne mein difficult ho raha tha because is that person put on weight so it's a very important sign sometimes i think we need to really look into history and I think this was the one of the biggest loser series which was there in the uh, TV in around 2013-14. I'll show you the main slide directly. These people had lost 58 kgs, but they regained 41 kgs. That was because of this resting metabolic rate and metabolic adaptation. Mm -hmm. So my time is up and I would call upon to my chairpersons. Thank you so much.